In this chapter, you will learn valence bond theory, hybrid atomic orbitals, multiple bonds, and molecular orbital theory. Let's see how bonds are formed. If I have two atoms, let's say one over here, one over here, let's say it is hydrogen atoms. So what happened is the positive nuclei is inside. Now, let's say they are far apart, far enough that they don't feel each other. What I'm going to plot is, this is a plot of energy, that's the potential energy, that's the energy that they feel. Okay, so when they are far apart, they don't feel each other that much. That's why over here, the energy is close to zero because they don't feel that much. What happens if we bring these two closer? Let's say over here, we bring it, let's say, bring them closer like this. Now they can feel something. What do they feel? The atom on the left, the nuclear, the positive, is going to attract the negative from this one. So let's say this is the left one, this is the right one. The positive from the left will attract the electrons from the right, and that's why it try to pull it closer. At the same time, the positive of the right will attract the electrons from the left. That's why they prefer going closer. When that is the case, when they feel it and they have lower energy because they feel more comfortable. The lower the energy, the more comfortable they will feel. So over here, they are going to have a lower energy. If we bring them even closer, they have lower energy. Why? Because now the positive can feel the negative. Positive and negative, they always try to attract to each other. And therefore, if I put them here, they have a lower energy over here. Okay, so we can say, if we push them closer, then they will have lower energy. That is correct. So let's say if we put them closer like this, where the electrons can overlap, so this positive can feel the negative here, it just pull them to, all together. After certain point, they would not like to get close together. Why? Because here is the positive, here is the positive. When the positive feels the positive and try to repel, and that is the point that it try to push back. If we try to squeeze them together, it's very difficult because two positive over here. And therefore, in order to push them closer, we need more energy in order to push them closer. That's why how the energy curve will look like this. That means when the atoms are in infinite distance apart, then they don't feel each other. Then the potential energy will be zero. At the optimized point, at certain distance, then they feel very comfortable where the positive doesn't repel each other that much but only attract the electrons. That is the most comfortable distance. And we call that distance, so this is a distance, then will be the best one, let's say over here. This will be the bond length. Because that is how they bond together, where this positive can also um, attract it to the negative from the other atom. And this energy over here is called a bond energy because that energy is lower than when the atoms are separate apart. Okay, I hope this one makes sense. We just have looked at one atom and the other atom. What happened with the atoms that are bound together with other ones. For example, if let's look at this one, carbon bound to carbon.
Okay, let's see how these two carbons bond together. We can also interpret this carbon over here. It has its orbitals, as we have seen before, when we write the electron configuration, we know that carbon has four valence electrons, and we can put those electrons into the S and P orbital. So for these two to bind together, we can interpret it as the carbons have a P orbital and also S orbital. And those orbitals, so this is from this carbon, and this orbital is from another carbon. We can imagine when we put them together, when we bring them together, then these electrons in this orbital can come over and overlap and form a bond like this. So a bond, in other words, is the sharing of electrons in the orbitals. So this is called a valence band theory. Valence bond theory. What it is? It is just the atomic orbital overlap. Okay, so there are different ways of orbital overlapping. Let's look at some examples. If they overlap in the same axis of the orbital, like this, okay, in the same axis of that bond, we call that a sigma bond. As for the p orbital, it can also go like this. I'm just giving you examples. So p orbital, as we have seen before, there are three p orbitals. They can light on x, y, and z axis. So how can this one form a bond? Well, the first thing is when they form a single bond, then this orbital, the one over here coming out, pointing toward each other, is going to form with the s orbital and also the p orbital. So when they combine, this is called a sigma bond. So it's called a sigma bond, represented with a letter sigma over here. How about this one? There's one pointing on top. So if, if there are electrons in those orbitals, they are going to form this way. The electrons are going to be going in this way. That means the probability of finding the electrons in those p orbitals sharing will be going in this direction. Instead of directly pointing toward each other on this axis, they are on top and in the bottom. And when that happened, so we call together this one and the other one, both of them together, we call that a double bond. So we put it like this. So in fact, a double bond is consists of a single bond like this formed by a sigma bond and a type of a bond go like this. And now we give a new definition. We call this type of bond a pi bond. So a pi bond is formed from p orbitals. Okay. All right. It sounds very difficult, but in fact, to do the exercise, it will be very easy. Let's look at the following molecule. Let's say I have a molecule look like this. And I would like to know how many sigma bond and how many pi bond. Sigma bond. All the single bonds are sigma bonds. As for the pi bond, if you have a double bond, then you have one pi bond. A double bond is one pi bond and one sigma bond. Pi bonds, if you have a triple bond, then you have one sigma bond and two pi bonds over here. Let's look at this way. 
Okay, so for example, now let's look at the CH bond. Let's look at this bond over here. CH bond, what is it? It's a single bond. So this one is a sigma bond. Over here, single bond, it must be a sigma bond. Single bond, it is a sigma bond. Single bond is a sigma bond. Single bond is a sigma bond. Okay, here we have a double bond. So what is this? A double bond, there will be, whenever they can connect together, there must be a sigma bond. So we can call one of the double bonds from here is a sigma bond. And the other one, we can call that a pi bond. Once again, sigma bond, all the single bonds are sigma bonds. With a double bond, one of them is a sigma and the other is a pi bond. If you have a triple bond, let's say in this case, a triple bond. So what is this? So one of them will be sigma and the other two will be pi bonds. So you have two pi bonds over here. That means whichever connect them, the first one, we call that a sigma bond. Okay, over here, this one is sigma. This one, it is sigma. So let's count, see how many sigma bonds. It will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight sigma bonds and here, one pi bond. Okay, let's look at this molecule over here. How many sigma bonds? Let's count. One, two, three. So this one has three sigma bonds. How many pi bonds? One, two. There are two pi bonds. Let's look at this molecule over here and see if we can find out how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds. Remember, every single bond is a sigma bond. And when you see a double bond, one of them will be sigma and the other one will be pi bond. It doesn't matter when we draw it on the two dimension on a graph like this. Okay, so let's count and see how many sigma. Sigma bond, I have one, two, over here, one of them will be sigma. So three, four, five, six, over here, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine sigma bond. And how many pi bonds? Let us count. Over here, with a double bond, I have one pi bond over here, so one. Over here, so I have two. So as for pi bond, I have two pi bonds.